So you might be forgiven for thinking this is a Commodore 64, and in fact, this was my Commodore 64 when I was younger. And there it is. Yeah, working. Yeah. But if you take a look over here, just to the right, in fact, I'll just flip the lid, it's easier. It's not a Commodore 64 at all. It's a Raspberry Pi 3, which is running a bare metal Commodore 64 emulator, which is really good actually. And I've got it hooked up to a Xbox joypad here to control it. What it's doing is it's a Raspberry Pi 3 with bare metal C64 running on it. And it's hooked up to this Kira, which is basically a keyboard and joystick interface that allows you to plug an existing Commodore 64 or A600 or Amiga A1200 or VIC-20 or Plus 4. So you can plug that into there and then you can convert it to, uh, it can be basically, you can use the keyboard and you can plug that into a computer as USB. Or in this case, it's plugged into the Raspberry Pi, which allows me to use it as uh, basically a bit like a Commodore 64, except it's not. And I can show that working on here. And there's the kind of like, um, menu you get for it, you can control that with, you can set these buttons up to do whatever you want. Uh, so it's really cool. And I've got a, you can actually save snapshots and there was a, I was playing retrograde. I saved a snapshot and now I can go back to my game and continue with it. And it does work really well. Uh, I've got no sound hooked up on this at the moment, but the sound works really well. I think it's just using Vice under the hood to actually run it. Um, but yeah, really cool. Um, I do actually quite like it. So you can get into this. It's much, it'd be much better with the sound, but this monitor doesn't have any sound outputs on it. So thanks for nothing, Dell. So that's great. The only trouble I've got with it at the moment is the power comes in for the Raspberry Pi. So it's, it's powered by there. There's no off switch. You just plug it in and it comes on. And there's a the HDMI going out to the monitor, that's all fine. There's a USB cable here that I've attached just to get the joystick so I can have an actual USB, proper USB joystick there. Um, but this one is the one that goes to the key rod. And if you look, it actually goes all the way around there and then it goes outside the computer and then back in there because basically the input for the key rod is actually on the outside here, which makes sense because you can use this to like, you can plug this into a computer or something. But I actually want it all internal now because the Raspberry Pi is inside. So there is actually a pin header here, which is not populated by default. But um, hopefully uh, what I want to do is take this out, populate a little pin header on here, cut this cable off and then wire it straight in so this USB cable doesn't have to go outside and then back in again. And then it's a bit more self-contained. So I'm going to have a go at that today and see how far I get with that. So I've got one of these teeny tiny four pin headers. I don't know if this is the right size. Is it? It is. So yeah, I should be able to pop that right in there, solder that in and then cut this lead off. So that's good news. That means I can do this. So first thing to do maybe is I cut the cable and I'll get this connector on first and then I'll solder that in and use that to connect it straight in. Right, so that should be long enough just to get to there. So it's just a case of putting the connectors on and soldering it in now. So that's the ends crimped onto this connector for the USB cable. And I've checked the continuity and they seem to work. So next job is to solder the connector onto the key bra. Yeah, I put a giant blob of solder on one of them, but it should be fine, I think. Right, so the last thing then is just to, I'll insert this connector into here and then in the right order, it did actually have the names of the colors that were on there and I'm gonna trust it. Red, white, green, and black. It's horribly sticky, that liquid flux. Better get these in the right order, otherwise this is a one-way trip. Right, so let's give this a test run and see how it does. There we go, well it's powered up. Does the keyboard work? No. What have I done wrong? So it's not getting power for some reason, but it is getting power. Yeah, so power is definitely coming in. 
but it doesn't light up. This soldering's bad on this one. This one I said I had the blob on. This is bad soldering. Right, so let me fix that. Solder just doesn't want, just doesn't want to attach to that pad properly. Well, that just did not want to cooperate. Right, let's try that again. I don't know, it still doesn't look good actually. And computer's on, the power light's not on. And we're definitely getting our five volts to there. Didn't think this would be this hard. <clears throat> yeah, so it looks like after a little bit of re-soldering of the key rod, it seems to be working now. I think it was just a bad solder joint on the positive. So that seems to be all right now, and that's connected inside. So that connection will go inside the case now, not from outside. I did cut the shield in my attempts to repair. I've cut the shield wire, which I don't think I needed to do, but I'm gonna leave it the way it is. The shield's not totally necessary for this cable anyway. But um, a little bit of messing around, but in the end, it seems to be working. Uh, it was just a bit of faff to get that solder connection correct. So I'll reassemble this now and see how it works. And I've got a working keyboard and I don't have a stupid cable going around the outside. So that is what I wanted. 